When I first got into Amazon Web Services, I remember one of the confusing things for me was IAM, Identity and Access Management, which is the way that you manage your user accounts for your AWS resources. Now, it's not that user management is confusing, it's just the way Amazon Web Services approaches it is very different in that a user account can have all these different credentials and secret keys and super secret keys and, you know, where are all these things used? So I wanted to save a lot of people some head scratching and hopefully give you a nice, clear definition of what this is and how to use it. So I'm going to take you to the AWS Management Console. This is where we can access all the resources that Amazon can throw at us. So this is essentially every resource that they have. Now, we can come in and limit users down to specific resources, and that's actually the best practice, is Amazon says, even if you are a one-man show, you do everything for AWS for your organization, you should create sub-user accounts for the specific services, like EC2, Route 53, uh, that, that have access to just the resources that they need. That way, if those accounts are compromised, they can't get in and essentially destroy your entire infrastructure. So, where we're looking at is right here, the IAM, Identity and Access Management, and Amazon tries to push you right into, uh, I guess, a little wizard is what you can call it, which I kind of steer clear from. Not that wizards are bad, but you just get more of what's going on if you do it manually. First thing I'd recommend is coming down here to the account alias and creating an alias for your AWS account. By default, this is going to be a whole bunch of gobbledygook. It's going to be like, well, to access your account, go to xj 59 or 6329 I mean, it's, it's just some impossible thing to uh, remember. So I created one called School Desk, uh, but if you can think of just a unique name, now it has to be unique within all of Amazon uh, Web Services, but if you can think of a unique name, then that's going to be your sign-in. You can then take that and give that to your users. Now, what do you mean users, Jeremy? I'm talking other administrators that might help you with Amazon Web Services. So it will take them straight to a login page. I'm going to uh, actually scrunch this down and paste it in. And you can see that it automatically comes up and says school desk. And that says, okay, I'm going to log into that account with whatever username and password uh, that I want to fill in there. Now, uh, I can come over here and create the users for my account. So maybe at sub administrators, maybe just, these are just dummy accounts because Amazon says you shouldn't use your parent account for normal day to day uh, stuff. I've already got one created called, called JC for Jeremy Chara, but let's just say I'm going to create a new one. Now, uh, I'll create the username of Bob. How's that? Nice and unique. And it says, do you want to generate an access key for each user? What's that? Well, let me create it and I'll show you. This is the access key. Access key and secret access key are used for API access. What's that mean? That means that Amazon Web Services, AWS up here, is cloud-based, and you can write all kinds of different programs that interface with that. You can do scripting, you can use what's called AWS command line tools to automate a lot of the stuff that you do, like creating virtual machines, add DNS records, I mean, whatever. Just about everything can be automated through an API. Now, API is an application programming interface, not a human. As in, you and I are not going to log in using that uh, key and secret key. A lot of times, and just to give you a simple example, you might download a, a, a program such as Cloudberry uh, CB File Explorer, which is a, a free one. Uh, so go Google Cloudberry File Explorer, which allows you to essentially use a file manager like Windows Explorer to copy files to and from Amazon S3 or Glacier, a lot of the storage in the cloud from your own local PC or server, and you can transfer for files back and forth. Well, that's going to tie into the API because it's an application that accesses that using those uh, secure credentials that are generated right here. You want to write those down. Now, if you lose them, it's not the end of the world, but you're not going to be able to get them back. This is the one time you do. Watch watch this. When I hit close window, it says, whoa, are you sure you haven't downloaded them in an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file? Are you sure you want, because you can't get those back? I'm going to hit close. And I go, oh no, oh no, I lost it, right? Well, you can click on Bob and always come in here and say, well, I want to give him some different security credentials. Like, here's the one it gave me, and you'll never be able to get that secret key. You can just say, well, I'm going to create another one. And now, those cr these credentials will get the same uh, it's going to give me the same warning, the same access that the Bob user accounts have. You can keep creating them. Now they're going to limit you and you, you're going to say, okay, well, you can't do this. You got to start deleting some of the old ones, which makes them inactive. But those, again, remember the access key and the secret access key are only used for applications trying to integrate into uh, Amazon Web Services. But remember, Bob is a human being. He has a name. So 
you can also assign a user-friendly username and password to this account. Now, his username we've already done. It's Bob, right, under our account. So we can go in and manage a password, either let Amazon create one, or I can say, well, my password is going to be, you know, throw one in there. Now, this is going to be used by Bob the human being, not Bob the API, to sign into the account. Now, there's not going to be much going on for poor Bob because as of right now, even though we've given him a, a password, and by the way, it's so super easy to add a multi-factor authentication device or MFA. This is like you could use an iPhone or an Android smartphone and use uh, uh, a utility to generate one-time passwords to where uh, not only do they have to have the password for the account, but they also have to type in this uh, auto-generated password that changes once every 60 seconds. Amazingly easy to do that, which is normally very complex. But nonetheless, Bob is not nothing. Bob is a nobody until we come in here and assign permissions. Now, this is why Amazon was trying to push us towards creating this group. Usually, you're not supposed to assign each individual user permissions, but you can do it. Uh, so this is what it looks like, whether you're assigning it to a group or an individual user. You want to attach a user policy. Now, again, Amazon tries to make it as easy as they possibly can, even though these permissions can be extremely complex because they use JSON, JavaScript object notation. Uh, but Amazon's like, hey, we, we want to hide all that from you at least initially while you're getting into this and give you some quick and easy templates that you can apply to the user. So maybe you just want to give this user Glacier full access. So maybe he's a backup user because Glacier is a long, long term, very low cost storage. So I just want to give this user access to the Glacier. Now right here you get a little tiny, tiny, tiny taste of the JSON code that goes into this access. And you could, I mean, if you're, if you're a, a, an AWS stud, you can create all this stuff manually. That's no problem. But Amazon's like, hey, let us let us automate that for you. So I hit apply, and now Bob, the user, has full access to Amazon Glacier. So when he logs in, whether it be through a username and password, which, again, can I, can I emphasize, why would he be logging in with username and password? To do administration, because he's an AWS admin. He's going to come to this console, go to his Glacier stuff, and maybe create some vaults that he can store files in uh, for his off-site backups or something like that. That would be something Bob would do as a user. But then, whatever you utility he's using uh, to do that backup. Maybe he's using, let's go back to Cloudberry again. They make some server backup software. Uh, when he uses that utility, it's not going to ask for Bob's username and password. It's going to ask for Bob's access key and secret access key because now you're talking about an application that's trying to use Amazon Web Services. Now, I know some of you are like, okay, Jeremy, I got all that. So you've got the users that you can create and assign the permissions. I've got the groups that I can, you know, instead of assigning individual permissions to the users, I can just create one group and then put all the users into that, which makes it a lot easier, a lot more scalable, a lot more modular. But what's this one all about? Oh, that's really cool. Uh, what a role does is assign permissions to, for instance, an instance. Now, Amazon Web Services calls their servers that you're running in the cloud instead of calling them virtual servers or anything like that. Well, they sometimes do that, but they'll call them instances. So what you can do is create a role that you assign to a server so that server has access to Amazon resources. I can't tell you how cool that is because, well, actually I can't, because before we had this ability, we would have to go embed, I mean, like go onto the server and save to the hard drive somewhere in a text file the access key and the secret access access key. Well, you know, when it comes to security, that's not the best because if somebody gets to that on the server and, and is somehow able to get that, uh, that little file, then they've got the keys to the kingdom, if you will. By creating the roles, you're able to come in and define essentially uh, the ability for servers to have permissions. And then you can assign those roles to the servers and they have rights within Amazon Web Services without needing these access keys and secret access keys. I know it was fast and furious, but I hope that really saves you a lot of head-scratching time trying to figure out what all these different credentials are when you're managing your users inside of AWS. Of course, come on over to cbtnuggets.com. I've got a whole bunch of series on AWS that goes in-depth, certification series, all that kind of stuff. For now, my name is Jeremy Chara. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.